neuroscience. I am passionate about neuroscience, which is a field study about the human brain and how it functions, and or a biotechnologist, which is someone who creates biological products. And so, you might be wondering how I got these passions. It all started when I was very little. My dad came home from Singapore one day, and he gave me a book. The book was called Stanley's The Great Big Book of Everything. Now, I'm sure some of you guys have ever heard of the term Great Big Book of Everything, or even know where did the book come from. It comes from a series called Stanley. He's a little boy who's able to go across the world to visit many places and interact with different kinds of wild animals. The book I have is a encyclopedia based on the great book of, of everything about animals. Other than that, my parents also bought me lots of stuffed animals, science toys, and dinosaur toys. Wait, dinosaur toys? That's a weird toy to give to a little girl back then. But I really love my dinosaur toys. In fact, I used to have a huge box full of these toys. Some are huge, and some dinosaur toys are really small. And so, I feel like it's because of these factors that I began my interest in sciences. Well, I may not want to be a paleontologist or a zoologist today, but these toys, they became my source of inspiration to become a scientist. I'm talking about this right now because I noticed that there are not many female scientists as there are compared to male. Why is that? Why aren't there more female scientists than male scientists? I did some research and I found several answers. Some say that science is hard. And that is something I have to agree on. If you're a physicist, there are so many equations that you have to understand. If you're a chemist, we have to know the properties of about 118 different atoms. And if you're a biologist, oh boy, there's so many things that you have to memorize. In fact, right now, I barely have any knowledge about the Krebs cycle. Some say that science is boring. You don't do anything all day except probably staring at test tubes for 16 hours straight or having to solve all these complicated equations. Some say that science is only for geniuses. That being said, someone who has a really high IQ. Albert Einstein's IQ was ranged from about 160 to about 180. But I want to tell you something. You don't have to have a huge IQ to be a scientist. Anyone can be a scientist as long as you work hard. Finally, some say that scientists is simply not for girls. When you're a little girl, sometimes your parents will tell you to don't play in the mud because it will ruin your dress, or don't sit in the garden because your clothes will get wet, or don't do this because your hair will get messy, or don't do that. But really, this is just making little girls unable to explore the world, to find answers to their curiosity. When I was in first grade, my teacher actually told my parents that I wasn't interacting well with the other girls. Why? Because when other girls are talking about their Barbie dolls, I was too busy reading books about animals. And so, my teacher told my parents to try to make me more girly by giving them something, by like giving me something that will make me act more feminine. And so, a few days later, 
my parents gave me a book about fairies. It's my first chapter book, and I had to admit, I love the book. And after I finished the first book, I asked my parents to give me more books about these fairies. My love for reading increased, and so does I found a new passion, literature. I spent most of my time reading classical novels and trying to analyze the meaning of each story. And in grade 10, I was taught poetry analysis. And this actually increased my love for literature, while my love for science decreases. And then comes a time where I have to choose my subject for the diploma programs and also my major. At first, I wanted to major in mass communications. But at the same time, however, I was still intrigued with biological sciences that I wanted to be my minor. So before I really decided on my major and my subjects for UP, I decided to reflect. And I was thinking and thinking and did some meditation for a few minutes until the end. I made my final decision on becoming a valuable scientist. The, no offense to my language teachers, I still love literature up to this day, and I really enjoy all of my classes. But I feel like biology is actually my calling. Back to my topic. How would we get girls to be in scientists? And why is it important? that we have women in sciences. Because science is really important in our society nowadays. Without sciences, I wouldn't have this clothes I'm wearing, this microphone I'm using, to lights in the ceiling, etc. And with more females in sciences, there will be more diverse ideas that come from the scientific community. There's a hot issue going on in the US right now about medications that are actually harming women instead of making them feel better. One of these medications is aspirin. The FDA just cut its dosage for female users because one of its side effects is lethargy. And there are several road accidents which are led from these women because uh, 24 hours ago, even days before, they have been taking aspirin, and so in the road, they are becoming lethargic. This could all potentially be avoided if there are more women in the science world and telling male scientists that, hey, we are different from you, not just in terms of our reproductive systems, but also everything about us. Our difference in hormones makes us have different biological and physiological aspects. And how do we get females to join sciences then? First of all, I have to tell you, you can't tell older females to join sciences. Why? Because probably they already know what they want to do in life. So, we tell younger girls. We tell younger girls about sciences. One way to do it is to give them general neutral toys. Now, I'm not saying that you completely cut off giving them Barbie dolls or my little pony plushes, no. Once in a while, try to give them something like Legos. Legos are able to build up their creativity by enabling them to create many things. Or, like my parents, give them dinosaur toys. In fact, there's this one toy I had when I was little. There are blocks of sand, and you use a plastic hammer to try to drill to the sand, and you can find different kinds of fossils. And since it's the new millennium, try to invite girls to learn how to code. Code.org has a solution for that. Little girls are being 
learning why they should have a code, why having them learning to code their favorite characters probably currently, Anna and Elsa from Frozen. While this game is a bit gender biased for females, at least the girls will be more interested to learn about computer sciences. Secondly, we need current female scientists to be role models for these girls. Now currently, there aren't many famous male scientists in the past. I mean female scientists in the past, as opposed to male. I mean, right now, the only female scientists I can think of are Jane Goodall, Marie Curie, Rosalind Franklin, and yeah, that's it. But if we can get current female scientists to tell little girls that science is an amazing field and have so many things to offer, these girls just might finally be interested about it. And they might be actual scientists one day. And to those little girls who have an interest in science before but have no one to talk to, they could finally have a role model. They could finally have someone that they could look up to. Finally, if you're a parent and your daughter says to you that, Mom, Dad, I want to be a scientist, then you have to support her. You have to do whatever it takes to make sure that her dreams come true. If you're not sure about the field she's taking, do some research about it. See how can she make a great impact to the world. Now, of course, not all little girls will be interested in science. And that is okay. They have their own ways to make the world a better place. But to those of you out there, little girls, if you're interested in science, welcome girls. Let's all try to make the world a better place for generations to come. Thank you.